the Board of Ed meeting room beginning at 6.30 for a 30-minute presentation. A microgrid is um, a mini grid system that we're going to uh, be considered to have installed at the, uh, the school complex at the uh, Lily B Middle School. We have the, the we have the community center, and we have the two wells there in proximity. And we we'll put these um, uh, all these buildings and facilities on the microgrid. It will save us money. This is all being paid for by grants, um, so it's a zero cost to the town, and our electricity rates will go down. Um, I would like you in on this because you're going to be asked to make this decision uh, very shortly, and I can't have this company keep coming back in for presentations if you can make it or if you can dvr it on channel 22 if you can't make it it will be monday at the east line board of education room that they meet in at 6 30 for a quick 30 minute presentation and uh, i chose that day because i thought that would be most convenient and they'll, they'll be in on it as well since their property is involved um uh, Mr. Daigle, could you speak to the um, the forum on September 28th? Yes, uh, September 28th will be uh, as sponsored by the Brian Daigle Foundation. It will be the fifth annual community forum on suicide prevention and mental health. We're going to have uh, presentations from the Law Enforcement Research Group as well as from the Veterans Crisis Line. Mr. Kurt Palmer from the Veterans Crisis Hotline and Officer David Cruikshank. Uh, from the Law Enforcement Research Group will be there um, making um, about a 15 to 20 minute presentation on uh, situations that the, those two organizations and members past and present of both the armed forces and our, our police departments have to deal with uh, to try and uh, continue the conversation about the importance of identifying mental health concerns, addressing them, and preventing uh, the uh, negative outcome, which unfortunately leads to some people taking their own lives because of the, the condition of their, their mental state. So the, uh, we're doing this in cooperation with the East Lime High School. It will be at the high school at 7 p.m. And uh, looking forward to being able to get some good information out, not only to the members of East Lime, we're expecting uh, attendees from a couple of uh, other police forces and uh, an invitation has been extended to the military commands at the submarine base as well. So uh, appreciate the opportunity to communicate the, uh, so, the presentation. Thank you. That's September 28th. Is that a Thursday night? It yes. is. Okay, and that's 7 p.m. In the, in the high school East auditorium. High school auditorium. Really appreciate everything you do and uh, the Brian T. Dago Foundation does to keep the conversation going instead of uh, putting it in the back and creating the stigma that it is that we bring it out front and we talk about it. And I think we change people's lives because of it. Appreciate that. Lastly, we had a water issue today. You may have heard about it. Uh, there was a, a trace of E. coli that was detected in a sample, one of our daily samples that we take, take in the raw water, the water that comes in to our filter system before it's filtered, before it's chlorinated. There was a small detection of E. coli, so we shut the well down. Of course, we tested the water coming out and there was nothing, but we... Um, we were waiting for samples to come back from the state, from DPH, Department of Public Health, today. Uh, we knew we would get um, the results in their order, whether we should go to a, uh, a water boil situation, do not drink the water thing. We knew we were gonna, we were gonna get that information at 10 o'clock. We weren't sure which way it was gonna go, so I made the decision very early this morning to tell the schools to shut the water down because we do have schools and we you know, have kids drinking out of the water fountain and um, it probably would have been kind of irresponsible to not let the schools in, uh, find out at 10 that yeah, we should have been, well, we are now under a boiling water thing and it would have created, created a little bit of a panic or uh, what if scenario. Um, we got the call from DPH that said, you're okay, the water's okay, you're doing preventative measures and we're testing again and et cetera, et cetera. The well's still down uh, while we uh, check into that. The water is safe to drink, uh, but we, we, uh, we, we were extra cautious. I guess that's the way to do it. I don't think we, we got um, uh, 
I don't think you can be too cautious with the kids and all. We knew the, the cafeterias were already starting to cook meals for, the, for lunch and all that. So we wanted to make sure everybody was in on the conversation. We shut the water down, and probably an hour and a half later, we were able to give the all clear and everything was okay. But, um, you know, we put the information out on, on Facebook. We did the Everbridge. We, put, we let the TV stations and newspapers know and all that um, before and after the situation. Um, and uh, it it was a little bit of a walk of horrors this morning, if that's what you were referring to. Um, and, and kind of stressful, but, you know, in this day of um, social media and websites and all that, it makes it a little bit easier to get that communication out and then be able to pull it back and explain why. Um, so it was a stressful day for everybody downstairs. They did a commendable job uh, of getting the information correctly and then distributing that information back out to the public. Um, and I think we're out there tonight with a very clear message that we were just extra cautious and it was okay to do that. It was okay to do that. Was, are there any questions about that? You may have piqued your curiosity there. If not, we'll move to uh, public comment. Uh, before we do oh, that, ma'am, um, you had a question. Uh, you raised the uh, you raised the issue of uh, the Parahouse account. Yes, ma'am. And so in our packets this evening, we had the memorandum. I wonder if we would like to make a motion and attach that to the September minutes. If that's uh, protocol, if that needs to be done, I, th well, I, I yeah, just wanted to correct it our minds. It, what, it's not in our minutes. Oh, what, it wasn't in our package, so, yeah. If you right. Want, so I, it not would, a bad idea. It would uh, clarify. Okay, sure, I'll take that motion any day. So if you want to make that motion. Um, a move to add to the minutes of the September 6th meeting a, the correction in a memo submitted to the Board of Selectmen on September 11th by Ms. Kathy Wilson, the Director of the Commission on Aging. Second. Great. Uh, any other comments? Uh, my only reason for not doing it is it's not reflected in the minutes to begin with the, the, in, the incorrect amount, so I didn't know that need, the, the record needed to be corrected, but why not? Uh, Extra precaution, again. Word of the day. So she stated that during the meeting or, or later? She stated it, but it, was yes. it wasn't part of the narrative of the minutes. So it's not in your minutes, the, the 30,000 figure or whatever she gave was not in your minutes. Right. So but I'm, I'm, but happy, it was, I'm happy to withdraw the motion. No, but, you know, it's part of, it was part of the video record. Mm -hmm. And why, I, I, Ms. Hardy, you're probably right. Let's just put it in there and it doesn't uh, cause any foul, I'm sure. It would be an attachment to the minutes. Sure, sure. So all in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I think that's fantastic. Why not? Great. Okay, now I guess we're ready for public comment. Mr. Funk? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm David Funk. I reside at 38 Hope Street, number 1212. Um, I have been listening to the reports and ex officios tonight. I did come up with more than, more than the one thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, the first item is uh, the comment about the microgrid. And you, Mr. First Selectman, mentioned that uh, it's reported that if that was to be installed, that we would see uh, power grid savings on that. And that brought to mind that over the years, that I, it, there's no way I can recall how many of these have come before us before, back when I was part of the town staff, as well as since, such as the solar project on a school roof. Uh, I think I just read recently an article about trying to change the boilers at the community center, oil the gas, and I think that's been done at the schools as well. All of them were brought for approval with the idea that they would save the taxpayers of the town of East Lyme money in the end. Yet I don't recall any reports that I've been made aware of that says, yes, we did this project, and yes, we did realize this savings, or we did not. And I think that being able to kind of review history and to see, before going ahead with more of these promise to save you money ideas, is that maybe we should find out if we've saved money at the previous ones that we spent taxpayer dollars on, or even got provided to us by 
uh, grants and other things. The second item uh, I'd like to discuss is the budget. You mentioned, again, you mentioned the state having some troubles with the budget, which has essentially put all 150 some towns and communities and districts in the state at risk on their budgets. I read in the paper every day, uh, one town or another is trying to make decisions on whether they should proceed with layoffs or proceed with budget cuts or or continue the course with what they're doing, waiting on the state's action. That brought to mind our own town budget. Uh, I haven't verified my numbers yet. I plan on trying to do this in the next few months, but I believe we've been under several years now, or at least a few years, of declining student enrollment. It's not visible in the town budget or in the school budget that this is in fact the case because the budget goes up, not a lot, but it does go up every year, both the school budget and the town budget. Um, I think maybe it's time that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance, and I will address, I, probably, I will try to address this more as the budget season comes up, really should take a look and go back in your own mind to what was called the dollar cost averaging system of how much are we not modifying the budget because we've got a change in the task. For example, if you have a declining enrollment of 30, 60, 90, or 100 students, you should see a decline in staff in there somewhere as a result of that. Or have we in fact been seeing that? Or really, have we, as the district, been adding <coughs> project or bells and whistles, or more courses, or smaller class sizes, etc.? Uh, I think the taxpayers will owe, owe a bit more information with regard to the result. The third item was the dog park. Uh, I lived very right down over the crest of the hill from where. Uh, this group, the 16 to 3 vote, is thinking is now a better site than where the batting cage is at the softball field over, over here at the Vets Park, Vets Field. One, I'm not sure a dog park is good business for the town, but that's really not my main point. That property up there was bought for four, approximately $4 million, a very high price, as open space. That is supposed to be for the enjoyment of people with trails and wandering through the property. It's connected over to, I believe we had an agree, got an agreement with Yale to connect over to their properties for connecting trails. It may be worthwhile to take a look at any stipulations on that property that a dog park might be an inappropriate uh, fixture to put up there. I, I do agree, there's parking there and there's a road up there uh, there is a place to put a dog park, although the foundation, somebody's going to have to pay to modify that foundation for it's a dog gone. park. So, uh, that, that's something I would think about. The last item I had, I, have, I, I was not here for the town meeting, and I, I, I did hear something prior to the town meeting that many of the items on here were not to be brought forth to the town tonight. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, could I be not told which item was? I think item three okay. was um, seen. Is that right? I don't have it in front of me. On this, on the yeah, town meeting, yeah, it was yeah. only three. Yeah, there were one, I, two, and four. Three. Number three we looked at. Okay. Um, I, was, I was the finance director in town and uh, it took me several years, and Mrs. Hardy was on the Board of Selectmen at the time, to um, get agreement from the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance that the town should establish the capital non-recurring expenditure account. When, at that time, there were uh, three or four accounts within Fund 32 that were established, uh, one was for uh, emergency equipments, fire trucks, uh, the other was for uh, the major public works equipment such as what we now have are rubbish collectors and the dump trucks, etc. 
There was one in there for the Board of Education, and I, I think the fourth one had, was really town projects type of thing. I don't know whether those are the only ones that are still in existence today, but I have some concern that the premise upon which those funds, those accounts that were approved by both boards and established as part of the town's funding process has may, may have been lost or gone astray in there. For example, I see that this item that was worked on tonight was 31000 from the for the Board of Ed. Um, if, if my recollection is correct, and it may not be, because not, not all of the funds were that we had this same limit. The, I believe the limit on the Board of Education funding was it had to be a $50,000 or greater item to be considered under the capital non-recurring expenditure. This item, for example, would not meet that criteria. I may be wrong. Or it may have been changed this thing because I'm not following it. But I would suggest, because I'm going to continue looking into it, um, that the Board of Finance go back pull out of history those resolutions that were approved by both boards establishing these funds, accounts, to be sure that you're still doing business in accordance with how those, those expenditure accounts were established. Um, they are not a capital budget source. Uh, they were not intended to be something that you could buy, for example, police vehicles out of, or pickup trucks. Uh, they were to be for major capital items that did not recur in any normal short range period of time, maybe only recurred every 50, every 12 to 20 or 25 years, or for major projects such as buying a piece of open space land or something like that. Uh, I, I noticed that a number of end of year capital expenditures were, were approved this year, this past summer, relating to funds that were pulled from those accounts. Uh, yes, they were approved a second time by a town meeting, but if I look around the room here, I don't really see a town meeting crowd here. And I would suspect that earlier this evening there wasn't too many more than what are here now. Um, that's what I wanted to make comment on tonight, and I, I, I am going to be looking at the CNRE if I can get the information on the original resolutions or if someone can point me to modifying resolutions, which I was not aware of, uh, and numbers of enrollment relative to the budget. That's what I'm interested in for the coming fall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Funk. Selectman's response, I have a few uh, on, on Mr. Funk's uh, items, uh, some corrections. We do report back the savings. We've done that uh, continuously and we will continue to do that, um, uh, report savings of all the different, um, uh, for instance, we just changed the street lights out. We know that the savings is paying for the street lights, so we better be saving or we're not gonna make our payment on the street lights. But there's many projects that have gone on in town and uh, we will report those savings um, and, and continue to do that. We have, uh, you mentioned declining student enrollment as, uh, student enrollment has gone up over the last couple of years. It's gone up. So, and I do know that um, we uh, have not added in any, or the Board of Ed has not added in any dramatic new programming that they are working with a very slim budget. Obviously, when you lose five kids, if it's $10,000 a kid, you don't save $50,000. You'd have to uh, lose a significant amount in the right grade level to be able to start <coughs> dropping teachers and all that. You know how that works. But uh, we have had enrollment go up. It is projected to increase further. At Darrow Pond, we bought 300, roughly, I use round numbers. We bought 300 acres um, about 10 years ago, a little longer than that, 200 were moved to conserv through a conservation easement. 100 was left for town projects, facilities, and structures. Um, and um, we talked about Little League fields, we talked about a water tower, which is the original purpose for the property. We're putting a, a communications tower on that property. And uh, the foundation is indeed covered over and landscaped at this point, so uh, the dog park could go right on top of it. Um, 
and we're uh, we are the trail system there is connected to Yale. It's connected well beyond Yale. It goes to the airport road, airline trail, airline trail. I always call it airport road. No. It's the airline trail. It's and it's not up in the sky. I don't get it. But um, which means you could walk for about three days in one direction before you run out of trail. Um, it's a fantastic uh, trail system up there. And if our citizens haven't got a chance to uh, use that and enjoy that, I do suggest that with this great weather we have coming up. As far as CNRE goes, most of the funds that were established are now long gone. We don't save for fire trucks and public works to, um, uh, equipment any longer in a CNRE. We put them in a vehicle acquisition um, program and we pay for them over time. Um, that's how it goes now. I'm sure the CNRE um, funds have been adopted over the years. There's many, many more CNRE funds now, including I think what the, what the um, Board of Ed pulled out from tonight was the rent from Project Learn. Yes. So there's, uh, they get rent from using have some of their school property and they use that rent back into the school system. Um, um, this is a fine example. So this rent is not coming from the, uh, the, the purchase of this van tonight did not come from the citizens of our town's tax, pay, uh, tax payments. It came from, um, indirectly at least, from the rental of property which of course the taxpayers pay for, but again, it does not come out, come out of our, um, our, the money we collect at the tax collector's office. That's really all, I, do, I don't wanna, uh, there's plenty of detail, I'd be happy to sit down anytime with you, Mr. Funk, and go over things, and we can go over the uh, record together, and I take a motion to adjourn. I can't, so we, can't we can't get into that tonight. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. No. All in favor, say we are out. Okay. Aye. aye. No, we don't do debate.